Well, despite their stellar record, a loss by the Harvard University debate team wouldn't normally be national, let alone international news. But one match last month wasn't your typical sparring contest. Three members of the Harvard team squared off with opponents, not from a rival university, but from a maximum security New York state prison. The topic was whether U.S. public schools should be able to deny enrollment to undocumented students. And despite being forced to advocate a position they don't agree with, the prison team was declared the winner. The story went viral across the U.S. and around the world. The prisoners were debating as representatives of the Bard Prison Initiative, a program that offers inmates a college-level liberal arts education. Since its founding in 2001, more than 300 alumni have earned degrees while behind bars. For more, we're joined by Max Kenner, the founder and executive director of the Bard Prison Initiative, 2014 recipient of the Smithsonian American Ingenuity Award in Education. It's great to have you with us. Describe the scene. Where did this debate take place? How did it take place? Well, the scene, you know, it was uh, really very simple. It happens in an auditorium uh, within a maximum security prison uh, while the people debating on our side are incarcerated. One, they are, as Amy said, college students. We are a college team and we are college. Uh, and, you know, we run in this particular maximum security prison and others across the state uh, the closest thing we can to a full liberal arts curriculum and replicating a full college experience. So students study the full breadth of humanities, science, math, Mandarin language, German language, Spanish language, etc., and also engage uh, in some extra curricular activities. Did the Harvard the, students come to the, the prison? The, the debate being one of them. So uh, people are interested in rhetoric and public speaking and debate, uh, and that got to the point where we started doing regular intercollegiate debates once a semester. Uh, we start with West Point. We debate the uh, cadets from the West Point Academy every spring. Uh, and we did well, and it was exciting and fun. So we invited uh, Harvard to come, who was a national champion last year. And um, so far, our record is three and one with the debates. Uh, and the and the it, the uh, uh, the inmates, your team argued against uh, providing assistance on documented students. That's right. Or, or, sure. It's a little more technical than that, but it's, it's boring, yeah. No, but did the Harvard students come to the person? That's right. Everything happens in person. Nothing happens remotely. So in, they, in our program, in the classroom, and otherwise. So, so they come to a maximum security yeah. person, and they debate this. Debate. Sure. So it's a large auditorium, same place where we have graduations and what have you. Uh, in the audience were over 100 other incarcerated barred students, a scattering of faculty and other friends of the program. Uh, and then there's a stage. And then there were three Harvard kids on one side, three of uh, the incarcerated barred students on the other, and a panel of judges. Who were the judges? Judges are people who do this professionally, work in that profession. And how did the prisoners feel? Look, any time you skid on a stage and are forced to, you know, articulate something clearly and be judged how well you are and clearly you're articulating it as compared to someone else, that's causing anxiety. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I think it's amazing how much the media has responded to the fact that Harvard might lose, you know. We've been doing this for a while, and just how special it was didn't quite dawn on us until uh, two weeks later, uh, after the event, this was still the most popular story in the Wall Street Journal. It sort of amazed us. But what, what was the reaction of the Harvard team and the Harvard coach? You know, to their credit, I don't think they thought it was extraordinary either, you know? I think, you know, I, they maybe, you know, wish they had prepared a little more. I don't know, uh, you know. Uh, How were the prisoners selected? How was the so debate? Again, so, so it's a self-selecting group in that you can join the debate union as a Bard student, if you choose, for fun, so something to do, you know, once or twice a week. Um, and then they prepare. And these are people, you know, all joking aside, who are very busy. They're enrolled full-time in college, an extremely, you know, rigorous academic program. And so, while they're 15 or so members of the debate union, they sort of self-select the three or four who participate formally in a given competition. Did the uh, warden uh, offer them any... Uh, 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 any uh, reduction of their sentences or <laughs> well, I don't think that's at his victory. discretion, <laughs> but I think many people felt uh, surprising satisfaction at seeing. Um, and was the audience prisoners? 
Yeah, our other incarcerated BARD students, that's right. I want to turn to a clip from a film that the BARD Prison Initiative produced on the occasion of its 10th anniversary. This is Eric Mateo, who graduated from the program in 2011. Growing up in Brownsville, I always felt like I would end up in prison because I didn't feel like I had many options. I'm now working as a case manager, working with 16 to 24 year olds with some criminal justice system involvement within the last 12 months. People don't expect a lot from these kids. And if people actually got to know them, they would prove almost everything wrong. You know, they aren't lazy kids. They want to work. They're eager to work. They have dreams that they want to be accountants and architects. And it brings me a lot of pleasure to see them achieve their goals. So that's Erica Mateo, who graduated from the Bard Prison Initiative in 2011. Um, how are the students taught in who are prisoners? Do the Bard professors come to prison? Absolutely. Everything happens in person. And the work is less extraordinary and less novel, I think, than it might seem. Everything we do, the entire, the basic idea of the program is an experiment, is what happens when we provide the same education that is typically afforded to the children of the lucky and the entitled and the rich to others. And the results have been extraordinary. We have, uh, you know, alumni in, in graduate schools at Yale, Columbia, NYU, people working in management and billion-dollar businesses, and most of all, alumni like Erica going back to the communities from which they came, serving youth at risk, people with HIV and AIDS, the homeless, et cetera. In the less than a minute that we have left, uh, has this uh, program of ours been replicated in other states at all? Absolutely. Uh, there's suddenly a real resurgence and a belief in the place of education in American prisons. And we have a program called the Consortium for the Liberal Arts in Prison, where we work with sister college universities, Washington University in St. Louis, University of Notre Dame, et cetera. We're in 11 states across the country. We've heard a lot about the school to prison pipeline. You're talking here about the prison to college pipeline. What can be done to help students? Earlier this year, President Obama announced a plan to offer limited Pell Grants to federal and state prisoners. Um, what would that mean? Well, that will transform the meaning of our prison system back to what it was prior to the Clinton crime bill in 1994, which is to say, though we incarcerate you as a fellow citizen or you as a neighbor, we have not written off the possibility of your contributions to society permanently. Max, as we wrap up, how did you end up doing this? We only have 15 seconds. Oh, dear. Well, I was an undergraduate at Bard College and recognized uh, what's now common, that the investment we made in punishment over a generation was extraordinary, and that educators have a place in fixing these social problems, and they shouldn't wait for the government and the public sector to lead the way. Max.